Praise God, praise God, praise God. I want to pray for those that are watching this morning that uh, you were some of those that tested positive or you were with someone that tested positive. Hallelujah. This isn't going to last long. And uh, we're going to command that to leave your body in the name of Jesus. And it'll absolutely be so because we serve the healer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so let's just pray for them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that have tested positive, In Jesus' name, we pray the healing virtue of Jesus Christ flows through their bodies right now. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, be whole, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Every symptom has to go in the name of Jesus. Lungs, you open up, you breathe freely right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. And no virus, no virus can stay alive in that host. No virus can stay alive in that body. In the name of Jesus. And we give you praise and honor and glory. And we thank you for their complete healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Man, I don't know what you'd do if you didn't serve God. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't serve God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, today is Communion Sunday. And uh, so if you want to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, or if you have your your device, put it on your device. Glory to God. I'm excited about this year. I'm excited about 2022. There's some things just on the inside of me about this year that I'm stirred up for. I'm ready to see some things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm excited for what God's doing in this city, for what God's doing in this world. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, you know, this is a very familiar communion scripture. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, you know, we always have, and it said as often as you do it. Didn't give a magic number for how often you should partake of communion. There are some churches, there are some denominations that every time they meet, they partake of communion. Nothing wrong with that. There are some uh, churches that will do it every Sunday night. Some churches will do it on every Sunday morning. Uh, Some churches uh, will do it twice a month. And so we've designated one Sunday a month, but we spend time talking about it. We put an emphasis on it. Because, yes, you could say that it is definitely a tradition. You know, and sometimes you'll hear some people and, and they'll talk about a tradition like there's something wrong with having a tradition. But I don't know about you, but there's some good traditions. You know, you may have had a really good tradition uh, last week on December 25th. And uh, because of your tradition, maybe you got to open some presents. Maybe you got some good things because of, because of your tradition. And, and uh, man, we had a, if you were here on Christmas Eve, we, had a, we packed it out. We had a full house. Because a lot of people's tradition is to start the season here. You know, to start the season at church and, and worship God. And, uh, you know, and, and some people, they, they're out of town. So, you know, they have to do whatever that is. There's nothing wrong with a good tradition, you know. And so communion, yes, is a tradition. It's a tradition that the Lord Jesus Christ Himself established. Okay? And, and it's a great tradition, but it's more than a tradition. You know, is it, is it religious? Well, if, if you are um, going to say that something is religious... Uh, because you do it at church, then, uh, well, it fit that category too. Okay, it, it's, it's religious then, because you do do it at church. But there is meaning behind it. And I believe we need to focus on what does it mean. You know, it's not a snack. It's not a Sunday morning snack. You know, used to when I was a kid, uh, we had real bread. And, and so, man, you, and you'd be hungry. Sometimes a preacher would be going, 
And, uh, uh, and he didn't stop early just because it was communion Sunday. And so, man, when communion came, and it was real bread. And if your mama wasn't watching, and you, because you tore your own piece off. And so if mama wasn't watching, then you went in full hand and got you a big chunk of bread. And I was a PK, and I know where they kept the bread after it was done. And so, you know, mom and dad and, and grandmother and granddad, they, they were greeting the people and everything. And I went in the back room, and I had me some more bread. Amen. That may be why I'm a little heavier than I should be. I ate too much bread. <laughs> you know, just like the bread. But you know, it's more than that. It's a sacred, holy ordinance established by Jesus. And so, you know, there, there's a seriousness behind it. It means something. You know, today, um, in, in most communion, probably in every Christian church, uh, is, is a wafer. And, you know, it doesn't have a lot of taste to it. It doesn't have a lot of substance to it. But the meaning is still there. And so we need to know what is the meaning behind it. You know, some people are, are, have been, and you know, like I said earlier, uh, 2020 and 2021 combined, there's probably more people out of our congregation today that are having to quarantine than both those years uh, combined. And, uh, but Charity and I have, have talked about how that, um, you know, and, and, you know, Jesus said, John 10.10, 10, it's a thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You know, and then Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, you remember that commercial so simple that a caveman could do it? You know, it's just so simple that a caveman could, could know it. All right. Uh, God, good, devil, bad. Right. I mean, that's what Jesus said. God, good, devil, bad. The thief, the devil, he, so, you know, I'd never want anything of the enemy to come on somebody. And the virus is not from God. Of course it's not. Of course it's from the enemy. Because the enemy kills, steals, and destroys. Whereas God wants people to have life and have it more abundantly. But, you know, for some people it seemed like, it has seemed like just for their own faith, that it was, it was almost better for them to go ahead and just get it once. So they could see that God would help them through it. Just so they could get on the other side of fear. Because some people are just so in fear over it that, that they've almost stopped existing. That their life is, is, is almost over, you know, because of it. And then, you know, if they get that positive test, not only are they, are they having to deal with uh, sometimes the symptoms because of it, but then there's a certain depression that's hitting them. Because, you know, it's just like somebody who, who would say, uh, um, they, you know, they, they saw a doctor and uh, said something about cancer and, and they say, oh, it's a big, big C. Now, I only know one big C, and that's Christ. Yeah. Cancer ain't no big C. This congregation here is, is full of cancer survivors. That's not a big C. Christ is the big C, and it trumps cancer. And it trumps COVID, and it trumps flu, and it trumps cold, or anything else. And so, we're talking today, I want to talk about the bread part of the communion. Because, you know, there is the, the vine, you know, the juice, what is from the vine. And then there is the bread. And so today, I want to talk about the bread, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus said was broken for you. It was broken for you. Now, why? you know, you, you need to stop and think about, you know, the Roman crucifixion, first of all, was horrific. I mean, still uh, to this day, I, I, and uh, if a historian, if you're a historian, you tell me I'm wrong, well, I'll accept that. But it seems like still to this day, it, it stands up there with one of the worst death penalties ever. Because, I mean, uh, there's a lot of torture that goes with not just killing somebody, but being nailed to a cross. Okay? Being nailed to a cross. A horrific torture, the crucifixion. 
But you know it was God's will that Jesus just not go and be crucified. But you know he stopped by the whipping post. And there's reason for that. He stopped and took a beating before he went and was crucified. And if you look at Isaiah 53, the prophet Isaiah talked about this. God showed the prophet Isaiah some things that were going on with this. Now, you know, there's been, and uh, I, I see it on social media, and I don't know why, but uh, it just seems like I ought to mention this, because sometimes uh, I've even seen Christians argue about, even Christians in our very own congregation, in our very own congregation. You know, we've always from the beginning said, hey, you know, uh, we believe God. We believe He's a miracle worker. And if, uh, if, if where are you at, you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. You know, to me, what, what I tell people is I call that being a grown-up. You know, I, I personally never ask my government to shield me in any way from sickness or disease. I, per, I, I never saw that as the government's job. In fact, I've read the Constitution and I see nothing in the Constitution that says the government is to protect me from sickness and disease. Okay? And, and so, you know, there may be some people that disagree with that and think the government's to do all that, but I, I'm kind of along the lines of, uh, I don't want them to have a whole lot of control. Okay? And, and so, what I tell people, because this happens in, in, in our local body here, is we'll have some people that they're like, well... Um, um, get a vaccine. And then we'll have some other people say, no, you know, I'm not going to get that vaccine. Hadn't been around long enough. I don't want that vaccine. Well, I, this, is, this is what I tell people. Where's your faith? You need to go with your faith. You know, if, if your faith is, hey, I'm going to get the vaccine and believe God, then get the vaccine and believe God. But if your faith is, I better not get the vaccine, I believe. Either way, you're going to need to believe God, aren't you? If you get, if you get vaccinated, you believe God that, that down the road there's going to be no repercussions from that and, and you're going to always be good, all right? If you don't get the vaccine, then you're going to believe God for health that way too. Is that true? Either way, believe God, but we don't need to fight each other. Because you know, the enemy comes in and tries to divide people over just things that is, is between them and God. You know what I mean? There's some people, there, I, I have some people in my family that, that have the vaccine, and you know their faith came up because they got it. Whereas without it, they were kind of in doubt and unbelief. But they got it, and then it, it kind of got a little swagger. They kind of got a little faith up because they had it, you know? They could go outside again, glory to God. But I'm glad they got it, aren't you? <laughs> and, and you know, I, I, uh, as you know... Uh, I teach at, the, at a couple of Bible schools in Greece and Albania, and I've been asked to come in 2022, and as of right now, I'll have to have it to go. I'll have to get a, a vaccinated before I'm able to go over there. But hey, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm, I'm going to preach the gospel. And, and so if you want to stick something in me before I go over there, hey, that's fine. <laughs> you know, uh, um, uh, John G. Lake, you know, when the Black Plague was going on, he said, you know, and people were dead and they'd froth at the mouth after they were dead. And he said, you know, get that froth and put it on my hand, put my hand under a microscope. And, you know, they put it under the microscope and they watched the microorganisms die as they're on his hand. Now, how come he said that? Because he knew the God he served. He knew the power in the God he served. And he knew on the inside of him, he had that God. Amen. Praise God. So why are you saying that? Because there's too much fear. You know, you remember Job? Sometimes I call it Job, especially when I'm talking to young people. I said there's a whole book in the Bible called Job. Everybody needs at least one. <laughs> Everybody's got to have a job. <laughs> but no, no, his real name was Job. But you remember Job said this after, you know, the devil put all that stuff on him, right? He said this, he said, what I feared most has come upon me. You know that I see that in the world today. 
I see because because fear is actually faith in reverse. Fear is actually believing for the worst. And I see that. Now, a lot of you know some people. You know maybe, maybe some elderly people, maybe some people that have been in your life or not in your life, but you know some people that they went around saying they had something for years. And the, and the doctor kept saying, no, you don't have it. No, you don't have it. And they said, no, I know I have it. I know I And you know what? One day they did, didn't they? One day they had it, just like they were saying forever that they would have it. Yes, indeed, one day they did have it, just like they said they'd have it. And so we need where we can to eliminate that fear. We don't need to be in fear. And, and the reason we don't need to be in fear is because, and communion is a celebration of that covenant, is we have a covenant with Almighty God. We have a covenant that's brought us into a different kingdom with different rules, different benefits, right? Into a different place, hallelujah, glory to God, where sickness and disease doesn't even have a chance. Amen. So in Isaiah 53, the prophet Isaiah, he said this, but he was wounded, in verse 5, for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Well, what do you think was happening at the whipping post? You know, and the Romans used that cat of nine tails. You know, it had a good solid uh, uh, grip. You know, a, a good solid thick uh, uh, leather end of it. But then it separated into nine whips. And in each one of those, you'd stick bone or you'd stick uh, some kind of metal or something harsh and sharp and hard. And it would stick into the flesh and rip it off, wouldn't it? And so when Jesus was taking those stripes, that's what Isaiah saw. That's what Isaiah was talking about. By his stripes, we are healed. Let me read it in the Amplified Bible. In the Amplified, it says it like this. It, uh, some people said that, that uh, uh, the Amplified was God had a woman write that because it's in more detail. But I, I didn't say that, all right? Somebody said that. But it says it in the Amplified version, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needed to obtain peace and well-being for us, was upon him, and with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Those stripes healed us and made us whole. And usually when I picture that and I read what Isaiah said, I just picture the, you know, and it wasn't, you know, they didn't get, you know, Barney Five to lay the stripes on him. I know I'm showing my age. Wave at me if you even know who Barney Five is. Okay, good, good, good. All right, all right I see some young people. I know. Hey, all right. Some of y'all seen the Andrew Griffith show for sure. All right. Well, you know, the Romans didn't get Barney Five for the whipper. You know, that's okay. We're going to whip this guy. Let's, let's get Barney Five. Remember Barney Five was skinny as a rail. Barney Five, he, like this, and had one bullet, right, that he kept in his pocket. You know, because Andy was tired of him shooting himself in the foot or shooting the floor. So he made him, Barney, keep it, keep it in your pocket. Keep your bullet in your pocket. You know, I, I, I uh, no, I won't share that. But anyways, <laughs> hallelujah, glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but you know, they didn't, get, they didn't get the weakest link of the chain. Can I say it like that? For the, for the Roman whipper. Yeah, they, they went and got the beefy guy. You know, they went and got somebody that was very intimidating. You know, maybe they had a big old beard like Reuben. You know, let's get a biker guy. You know, let's, let's get a guy that looks like he just, you know, came out of the biker gang and came to church one day. You know, they wanted, they wanted somebody tough looking. You know, big arms to do the whipping. And so I pictured this big guy and they took turns. You know, was usually their custom because I don't know if you've ever whipped anybody, but uh, you're going to get tired. <laughs> All right. So they took turns. And uh, but I picture this. that When they lay a stripe on, I picture well, that's that's influenza right there. Another, another big guy come over here and lay another stripe. I think, oh, that's cancer. 
somebody else come over and lay a stripe. Well, that's, that's arthritis right there. Somebody else come and lay a stripe. Well, that's every virus that the devil could ever invent, including COVID. Somebody else lay a stripe. Well, that's some ill bacteria like streptococcus. A strep throat. <laughs> you know, somebody else come and lay a stripe, and that's a blood disease. Like uh, 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 type 2 or type 1 diabetes, you know. There's a stripe for that. You know, it used to be kind of a popular thing where, uh, I don't know if it was when we were first learning to use our smartphones, but uh, we used to go around our, maybe it was a commercial, maybe y'all need to help me preach today. It was a commercial, I think, where they'd say, there's an app for that. Y'all remember that? We need to say, there's a strap for that. You know, whether symptom comes against you, you need to say, hey, there's a strap for that. Oh, I, I got a sore throat. Hey, there's a strap for that. Seems like my temperature's going up. There's a stripe for that. I got something wrong with my ear. There's a stripe for that. Something's wrong with my eyes. There's a stripe for that. Whatever that is, by His stripes, we are healed. There's a stripe for that. Well, you know, Jesus also quoted that in Matthew 8, verse 17. It says, after He was going around healing people, it says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying... He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Well, that's a quote from that scripture we just read. By his stripes we are healed. And then if you'll look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Now, Isaiah, the prophet, is looking ahead to Jesus taking those stripes. But Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, is looking behind and what's already been done. And so 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Peter says this, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Well, you, you remember English. You know, everybody had a little bit in class, and uh, whether you wanted to or not. But there's such a thing as called past, present, and future, isn't it? Well, Peter's talking about it like it's past because it is. He's looking back at the fact that Jesus took those stripes. But do you know this? If there is something that you can say you were, you know you could also say I am. If it's still with you, right? If it's still because of that, you could also say I am. Now, I know a minister used to say it like this. If I, if I was, then I am. If, if Jesus, if I'm healed because He took those stripes, then I'm healed now. Well, you know, when, when somebody asks Jesus to be the Lord of their life, Jesus doesn't die on the cross again, does, does He? Well, that was over 2,000 years ago that that happened. I mean, it did happen, but that's quite a, that's quite a long time. And Jesus doesn't die on the cross again because somebody gets saved. It's something that already happened. So what happens in that individual when they get saved is not that Jesus is dying again for them. It's not that Jesus is having to go through that torment again for them. It's that person accepting what Jesus already did. So if, our, if, if we are already saved, we just have to accept it, then you could also say, I'm already healed, I just need to accept it. You've already been healed. Jesus has already taken the stripes. He's not going to take them again. He's not going to take those again. But what I see a lot of in the body of Christ, and, and, I, and I believe it's a lot of maybe not knowing how to use the Word of God, is sometimes we either want a, a, a gift of the Spirit in manifestation, such as the, the gifts of healings, where there's an instantaneous anointing felt, or it's like, well, uh, I guess it just didn't happen. Well, I guess, you know, and, and then some people think of a religious reason because they don't want to be at fault. I just, I guess, I guess God just didn't want me to have it. I guess, maybe you've heard some of these. Have you heard this one? Uh, God's just trying to teach me something. Wow. Jesus said he was better than any earthly father. And I'm not the best, but, you know, I have 
three daughters and none of them would I like smack down to try to teach them something. There's none of them that I, I, I want, hey, I, I want y'all to really know what it's like to, to get hit by a car so that you will never again play in the traffic. Can you go stand on Houston Heart? No, I wouldn't do that. I, I want y'all to know that fire is hot, and so I'm not going to warn you not to touch the stove because I want you to burn yourself. No, that, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? Jesus said, your heavenly Father is much better. Much better. Hallelujah. So no, God's not trying to teach you something. You know, God would have to steal sickness and disease from the devil to give it to you. And he's not a thief, right? And then Jesus said who the thief is, didn't he? He said what the thief, Jesus plainly said, hey, this is the devil's mention. Kill, steal, destroy. So if someone's trying to kill you, someone's trying to destroy you, it's the devil. Jesus said, this is my mission. This is what I'm about. I want to give you life. I want to give it to you more abundantly. <laughs> Amen. That's, that's the bread of communion. You remember, you remember what Jesus told the Syrophoenician woman. You know, she wasn't from the house of Israel. And, and man, she wanted her daughter healed, didn't she? Do you remember this? She wanted her daughter healed. And Jesus said this. He said, it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Now he's calling her a dog by saying that. Okay. Some people would have been out right then. Oh, you calling me a dog? I don't, I don't need this. I don't have to put up with this. <laughs> but no, this lady wanted her daughter healed. This lady is like, you call me whatever you want. My, my daughter's going to be made whole. And Jesus actually talked about her faith and admired her faith. But I want to hone in on what Jesus said. He called healing the children's bread. The children's bread. The children's bread. The children's bread. Well, how do you become a child of God? You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you're a child of God, aren't you? Well, look at how you got saved. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. In 2020, seemed like I had COVID, never got tested, don't know for sure, but it seemed like my whole house went down in a heap. <laughs> I mean, the fatigue was unreal. If you ever, if you know you had it, then you know about the fatigue. The fatigue was like, okay, I'm feeling better. Oh, I need to lay down. Within the same minute, you know. I mean, the fatigue was just crazy. And then not being able to taste food. For me, that was worse. I finally had some canned soup. I guess it was salty enough that I could taste that. I was like, oh, that's good. So I ate me a lot of canned, ate ramen noodles. Man, I don't eat those anymore, you know. I've been delivered from ramen noodles. <laughs> but, you know, when you can't taste... Whoo, ramen noodles, good, man. But uh, weird stuff, couldn't taste, couldn't smell, just, you ever seen uh, Sylvester and Tweety Bird running around, and, and Sylvester's going to catch him, right? If Grandma don't intervene, Sylvester's going to catch Tweety Bird. And all of a sudden, Tweety Bird walks, and there's these razor blades going like this, and Tweety Bird goes through one of the squares. But Sylvester, he's a big cat. He can't do that. And Sylvester's also kind of dumb, you know. And I have a cat. I can say this. Most cats are dumb. All right. So I know yours is smart, but mine's pretty dumb. And uh, so Sylvester runs through it. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's just run through all these razor blades. So he like, his body is chopped up, right? And it just falls in the heap of, in the floor. That's what it felt like. It felt like Tweety Bird messed me up. I ran through a bunch of razor blades. And here my body is laying all chopped up in the floor. That's, that's what I felt like. And then, of course, you know, there's, 
like somebody parked a vehicle on top of your chest, you know, it's like, I can only breathe in so much. And um, at first the symptoms weren't too bad, and then they were getting kind of harsh. And it was getting, it felt like not good. You know what I did? There's an old, uh, old movie. I think it's a mafia movie. And in this old mafia movie, I know I, I wasn't always saved like you, but in this, old, in this old mafia movie, they say, go to the mattresses. Anybody ever heard that? Go to them. Why? Because they have some guns hidden in the mattresses. You know, they say, go to the mat. I went to the mattresses. And what's that mean? I got ready for battle. I wasn't going down. I got my Bible out and I started quoting scripture. I started saying, by whose stripes I was healed. If I was healed, then I am healed. You hear me, lungs? You're healed. You are the healed. You're the healed of the Lord. And you're going to take in oxygen like you're supposed to. You're going to let out carbon dioxide. You're going to function. Every bit of my lungs are going to function. All of them. Not part of them. All of them are going to function. I'm going to breathe in and I'm going to breathe out. And you're going to function. You hear me, head? You're the healed of the Lord. You're going to stop hurting right now. Taste, you're coming back. Because you're the healed of the Lord. Sinuses, you're going to open up because you're the healed of the Lord. And you know what? I, I just kept saying that. And, and I just walked the floor. And I put some stomp to it. You know what that means? It means you're not just walking the floor. You put, and I put some stomp on it. I said, I'm the healed of the Lord. COVID don't have this body. This body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to have COVID. I'm not going to be sick. Sick is not of God. God didn't call me to be sick. He called me to be well. I don't care what's happened to that virus. I don't care what people say about that virus. It don't even, I mean, it matters to me, but even what it's done in other people's body has nothing to do with my body. This is my body now. The Bible says my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. This body has a spirit of God on the inside of it. And if that same spirit that raised Christ up from the dead dwells in you, then it quickens your mortal body. Body, you be quickened. You be made alive right now. And I started speaking to my body. And I started raising my voice up at my body. And you know what? My body started feeling better. <coughs> it seemed like when I get quiet and when I just get calm and just go with the flow, Ooh, here come the attack. Here come the worst of it. But then I'd get mad again. And I would get up and I'd speak the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because healing belongs to me. If healing belongs to me, how am I going to let something take it away? No, it belongs to me. You know, if you have a, if you have a bulldog, and you give that bulldog a bone... I dare you try to take it out of its mouth. I'm going to go ahead and try. You, you, you got a bulldog, and you say, okay, butch. I watch a lot of cartoons. You say, okay, butch, here's your bone. A butch grabs hold of that bone. And you say, you know, I don't really want butch to have that bone. And you pick that bone up, and guess what? You're going to pick up butch with the bone. In fact, you, you could get a bulldog to grab the middle part of a bone and, and you could grab either side and you can take that bulldog and you can, in his back legs, it'll be straight out. And you can spin with that bulldog. But after you're done, that bulldog will still have his teeth grabbed hold of that bone. And that's what you need to be with the Word of God and healing when it concerns your body. You need to grab it like a bulldog would grab a bone and say, no, God meant healing for this body. I'm not going to be tore up. I'm not going to be messed up. I'm not going to be laid out. Healing belongs to me and I'll have it. You know, Smith Wigglesworth used to talk about waiting at a bus stop and this lady you know, she came to the bus, and, uh, uh, and she intended to get on the bus. And uh, she had her little doggy that was following her, and followed her to the bus stop. And she, you know, talked so sweetly to her dog like we all do. And uh, uh, she said, now, whatever the dog's name was, you know, she said, now, honey, you go back home. And, you know, the dog just stayed there till just a-going. 
And she said, honey, go, go ahead back home. Go ahead back to our yard. And he just stayed there with her tail wagging. And then she looked at it and said, get! And I mean, that dog took off. <laughs> and that dog went home. You know, sometimes people, Christians will do that to the enemy. Now, you know, devil, I'm not going to take that. And he just stays there with his tail just a wagon. But you know, you get serious about what you have in God's Word. Hallelujah. And you take it. You know, the Bible says that heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have benefits that we don't even know about, and healing's one of them. You know, if you start a new job, you, in, you today especially, you're going to get a packet this thick, aren't you? You start a new job, especially depending on how big the company is, uh, get ready for some reading, you know. But guess what? If you don't read it, then there's probably going to be some things that belong to you just because you're an employee at that particular organization that if you don't say, hey, I want that, you're not going to get it, but yet it belongs to you. You know, I used to hear of this millionaire who, who, who died and uh, uh, lived very poorly. And they went to his house, and I mean, this guy, you couldn't tell it by how he dressed, you couldn't tell it by where he lived, but they found under his mattress cash upon cash. I don't even know how he slept on the mattress. They, they found so much cash under his mattress. Well, you know, he could have taken that out at any time and had a better place to live if he wanted to. He could have taken that at any time and gone out and bought some nice clothes if he wanted to wear them, or at least some clean ones if he wanted to wear them. It already belonged to him, but he didn't use it. Healing is already yours whether you use it or not. It belongs to you. Jesus paid the price. And so when we partake of communion this morning and, and we break that wafer, that's in remembrance that his body was broken. And Jesus didn't say, hey, my body was broken, but Jesus added this, my body is broken for you. You know, people have been healed while they're partaking of communion. Because it put them in remembrance, hey, man, that body was broken for me. I don't know what the enemy's tried to do to you, but it didn't have to stay. Hey, you know, just because it was there in 2021 don't mean it'll be there in 2022. And so when you partake of communion this morning, you break that wafer and you say, mm, that body was broken for me. Jesus took those stripes for me because God loves me. God wants me to be well. You know, Jesus said, I, I, I'm not saying anything that the Father hadn't said. Jesus didn't do anything that he hadn't seen the Father do. Jesus was the absolute expression of God's will. Was he not? Well, what's it say? He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. Amen. Oh, I'm back for a minute. <laughs> interesting, interesting. You know, when you read through the Gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you'll read at the forefront of the ministry of Jesus here on earth that what did he do? He went about healing all that were oppressed. What did he say? Your, friend, your sins are forgiven. He would tell people that, wouldn't he? I mean, it caused up a stir, didn't it? The religious folk did not like him saying your sins are forgiven. Who are you to tell me? Who are you to tell them their sins are forgiven? So he was healing people physically. And he was forgiving their sins. You know that's still what it's about today? Do you know God still wants that for you today? Life more abundantly. The best life on this earth to be forgiven of your sins. To receive eternal life. To be in right standing with God. And on this earth to have the healer on the inside of you. To be able to receive healing. To be able to say, oh yeah, I need healing in this arena. I receive that healing right now. Oh, something's going on with my throat. I receive healing for my throat 
right now. I just, I receive it. I had you turn to Romans 10, verse 9. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So how did you get saved? And that's, a, that's the greatest, biggest miracle anybody could ever have, isn't it? I mean, doesn't it say when you get saved, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus? So the real you, the spirit man, is completely different than it was before. And how did that miracle happen? That miracle happened because you believed it and then you confessed it out of your mouth. If the greatest miracle that can ever happen in your life came into your life by you believing it and then confessing it out your mouth, couldn't some small healing in comparison also be manifest on the inside of you because you believed it in your heart? And you confessed it with your mouth. Would you stand with me? I want us to do that. Because I don't know. Maybe there's something that's coming against you. Maybe there's something that you've been having to deal with. I know there's some people watching that are dealing with some things. And getting over some things. So, what I want to do is this. In Psalm 91, in verse 9, it says... Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. No plague shall 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 come near your dwelling. Because God is your refuge, no plague shall come near your dwelling. And so you need to confess that. You need to say that. You know, yesterday morning, I wasn't feeling that great. Night before, I didn't sleep very much. Yesterday morning, I wasn't feeling that great. But I started saying it. You know it says in the Word of God for the weak to say they're strong. Now, you wouldn't know it by listening to most Christians because most Christians go around saying, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. Don't they? I feel bad, I feel bad, I feel bad. But it actually says that if you're weak, say, I'm strong. And so I felt a little weak. And I said, no, 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 I'm strong. I'm strong. I started quoting the word. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I am the heel to the Lord. No plague comes nigh my dwelling. No plague enters this body. No plague can survive in this skin. I'm the heel to the Lord. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. And for a little while, I laid there just feeling like I I needed to sleep for a day. And, and, And for a little while, I laid there saying, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And then I got up and walked around saying it. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm strong. And you know what? I could literally feel my body gaining strength. I mean, I could feel my body quickening on the inside. Hallelujah. You say, well, that work for me. It sure will. It sure will. The Bible says that His Word is health to your flesh. Oh, you start speaking to that one. You know, (laughs) you know, sometimes people, well, you know, I need to be healed of this or that. Or, Do you know the Word of God itself? The Word of God itself will cause your flesh to heal. Just His words. Now, that makes sense if you know what happened in the beginning, right? What did God say? Light be, and it was. The very words of God have creative ability. The very words of God spoken causes things to come together. You know, scientifically, that they say now, you know, there's things that are smaller than the atom and, and, and now, you know, smaller than electrons and protons and neutrons. And they put a specific word on it, and I can't remember that word. But whatever that particle is that's smaller than that, they say they know what that particle is made out of. Is that what it is? And they say this. That particle is made out of sound. Well, didn't God speak and it happened? Well, that doesn't surprise us at all. 
what are you saying? If you want to change your body, then you better be saying something. If you want to change the world around you, it's going to come out here. It's going to come out right here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I encourage you to start speaking the right thing. Find out what God says about you. Find out what God says he wants for you. And then you line this up with the word of God. And those of you at home, you know to do that. You get your word out right now. You start speaking life. You take time out of your laying in bed or whatever it is you're doing and get yourself up, even if you have to pull yourself by the ear and pull yourself sitting up, and you get that scripture and you make yourself read the word. Amen. Glory to God. You know, there's somebody with uh, in law enforcement, and they're, they're tested positive here lately for COVID. They don't live here. They're up north Texas. And so there's a law enforcement doctor that they go to. And this particular doctor wants these law enforcement, you know, back out there. It happens to be a law enforcement that the state really depends on, especially right now. And so they need, it. They need them to turn around. They need them back out there. But you know what this doctor said, told this person? Diagnose positive COVID test. Said you get your smartwatch or whatever you got. I want you to register at least 5,000 steps a day. You know that's completely backwards from what you want to do if you've got a virus. You want to go hibernate. You want to go lay down. But this doctor knows that the bottom half of your lungs will not fully expand if you're in a laying down position and this doctor knows to avoid getting those lungs full of the virus he needs those people active even when they don't feel like it even when everything in their body says my brother used to tell me this he had some back issues and I, I used to have some back issues too and he used to tell me he used to say you know the thing that they say that will help you the most is the thing you don't some people aren't healed because they know when they're healed they're going to lose a government check come on now the enemy knows how to play tricks he knows how to keep people down huh come on blind Bartimaeus what do you have to do before he got up and went to Jesus he took off the beggar's coat the Roman government gave him a particular coat that says you have a right to be on the street and to beg because you're blind and when Jesus said, bring him over here, the Bible says he got up and he took off his coat. It was time for a life change because he's going to receive his sight. <laughs> Jesus wants you well. Father, I just thank you. God, I just thank you. You're so loving. You care for us so much. We just give you praise and honor and glory. 
Thank you, God, for wanting us whole, for wanting us healed. Thank you for the covenant that you gave to us. Would you bow your head? Would you close your eyes? Nobody looking around. If anybody's here this morning and you say, Preacher, I'm not saved. I, I don't even know what that is. I, I don't know if I've ever been saved. I don't. You know, Jesus told a very religious man, He said, You need to be born again. Born again. This religious man said, How do I do that? How can I get back in my mother's womb? And Jesus said, No, not born out of water. Born out of the Spirit. You need to be born again. I read the scripture where it says you believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. So why do I have to even do that? I know Jesus died on the cross. You have to accept it. Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one goes in the Father except through me. He did all the hard part. But let's for a moment, you have your eyes closed, so picture this with me. You're in a courtroom, and the prosecutor shows visual evidence. He shows a video. You did this. Everybody sees it. You see it. They see it. Everybody sees. There you are. You're committing the crime. And the judge says, okay, well, it looks like you're guilty. I, we all saw you do it. And so he lays the gavel down and says, guilty is charged. And he's about to give your conviction. He's about to say what your punishment is. And it's death. It's the death penalty. You know it's coming. But then somebody who comes in and they say, judge, may I approach the bench? And the judge says, that's highly unusual. Come on. And you go up to the bench. This person goes up to the bench and they said, I've never done anything. I've never, I've never spit on the sidewalk. I've never done one single thing wrong. And the judge says, I know, you know, you're perfect. You're the model citizen. You've never done anything wrong. And he says, okay, judge, may I take their place? Will you, will you give them my perfect life? Will you trade? Can I trade with them? And can I take whatever punishment they're supposed to have? And the judge says, okay, I'll allow it. The man walked in and said, I want to do it. The judge said, I'll allow it. But now it's on one other individual, the guilty party. Because the guilty party can either accept what that person wants to do for him, or the guilty party can say, no, I don't accept it. And that's where you're at right now. Have you ever accepted that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Have you ever made Jesus the Lord of your life? Being saved is a no-so experience. If that's you this morning, and you want to get saved, nobody will force you to get saved, but you want to receive Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior. If that's you, you want to be born again, raise your hand. If that's you. It's up to you. It's completely up to you. God left it completely up to you. If you're watching on Facebook Live or the YouTube channel, and that's you, can you raise your hand? I know I'm not there. I can't see your hand, but God can see your hand. God knows you're making that decision. And now I want to pray. One more invitation. Because there maybe there's somebody watching, maybe even somebody in this room, and you say, I did that. I know I've been saved. Jesus, He became the Lord of my life. I had a no-so experience. I was born again, but I'm not in fellowship with God anymore. I've walked away from God. But I want to come back home. I want to come back home. If that's you, would you raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. That's me. I walked away from God, but I'm back now. I'm back. I'm back. I'm out of fellowship, but I want to get back in fellowship. 1 John 1, 9 was written for you, and it says that if you'll confess your sin to Him, He is faithful and just, and He'll forgive you, and you can come back into fellowship. For those that might be watching today, will you help me pray this prayer? Will you encourage them by praying this after me? Heavenly Father, thank You for sending Jesus, Your only begotten Son, to put on humanity to take my place, to die on the cross, to rise from the dead. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I belong to you. 
and I'll serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Would you give anybody that may have prayed that for the first time a big round of applause? Just let them know you love them. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says that heaven throws a huge party for anyone, anyone that comes home, for anyone that gets saved. Glory to God. Would you be seated for just a couple of minutes? We talked about the communion table. We talked in particular about the bread. Jesus said He's the bread of life. By His stripes, we were healed. We believe in open communion. What is open communion? Open communion means it is open to anyone who believes. If you're a believer, if you're a child of God, it is open to you. You may partake with us. Hallelujah. One of the things that I always do before I partake of communion is I search on the inside of me. I just pray, God, is anything not right? Is there anything I need to change? Is there anyone I need to forgive? Is there anything I need to do? And you know what? He's always faithful to show me. And so this morning as we partake, I invite you to do that. Let's stay in an attitude of prayer. I'm going to ask for the ushers to come. I'm going to present it to them and they will take it to you. And then we will partake together. I'll read a scripture and we'll pray. And then we'll partake together. But in particular, especially you at home. In particular, when you break that wafer. When you break it, I want you to say, His body was broken for me. I'm healed because His body was broken. My body's put back together because His was broken. I'm well and I'm healed because He took sickness and He took disease. Amen. After you've received the element, stand back with me and we'll pray. Come on, ushers. have your elements will you please stand so that they know that they were able to get to you I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. And then we're going to pray. Thank our Heavenly Father. Shall be blessed, we shall partake. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. We're going to pray, and then there is a top film that you pull back, and the wafer is there, and then there's another one you pull back to get to the juice. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We come before you with thanksgiving, with praise, with adoration. Father, this was always your plan. It was a plan that the enemy couldn't mess with, that the enemy couldn't do anything about. It was your plan. From the foundation of the world, you knew. You knew we would need a Savior. You knew. You knew that Jesus would have to put on flesh and become just like one of us to be our substitute. Father, what can we say but thank you? Thank you for the blood that was shed, the blood that flows from Calvary's heel. For what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me a whole again? Nothing but the blood. Thank you that the blood of Jesus when on the inside of us, when we confess Jesus as Lord and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and made us new. Father, thank you that on the way to the cross, you made Jesus stop at the whipping post. Because you not only cared that our eternity would be made right. You not only cared that in the sweet by and by, yes, we would go to heaven one day. Yes, our eternity would be with you, but you cared about the now. And you cared about the present. And you had Jesus stop so that He could be whipped with sickness and whipped with disease. So that His body could be lacerated and His body could be broken. So that we could be healed. Father, with a grateful heart, thank You. Thank You. We give You praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Pull back the first part. Let us break and eat together. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was broken for our physical healing. The second part, let us drink together. Would you thank God in your own way? You thank Him. You thank Him. If nothing else, just tell Him thank you. Just tell Him thank you. God, if now through eternity, every second of every day, I said thank you, it does not add up to enough. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Glory to you, God. Say this after me. Says I, say, I'm healed. I was healed by the stripes put on his back. I am healed. I was healed by those stripes. If I was healed, then I am healed. I receive healing for this body right now. Whatever might be going amiss right now in your body, will you just receive healing? Right now, just receive healing. Receive His healing power. He did it for you. He did it for you. Father, we receive your healing. Thank you. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're at home, you tested positive or something else. We have several, several people that tested positive. We have people that are out for other reasons, other things that are hindering them. We all here, we want you to know that we're thinking about you. 
We want you to know that we love you. That your face is in our mind. We want you to know that we could never forget about you. We want you to know that we are standing, we are praying, and we are believing God for you. And we are believing that we will see you soon. Is that right? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, are you glad you came today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, over half of uh, our team up here are gone, and at least half of people out there are gone. It was a different service, wasn't it? Huh? But we came to worship God, didn't we? And He's still here, isn't He? Amen. Praise God. You know, before you go, if you don't know somebody, introduce yourself. Before you go, just love on somebody. Tell them a little something about you. Just tell them you're so glad that, that you were able to have church with them today. I'm going to ask Selena, because we're missing whoever it was. Selena's going to be in the hospitality booth. If we-